just how important is Gru to the Despicable Me franchise? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Minions. Ladies and gentlemen, the supervillain we've all been waiting for, Scarlet Overkill! Doesn't it feel so good to be bad? Dreams come true. Respect. Power. Banana. Banana. When it comes to Illumination Entertainment, they really only have one trump card, the Despicable Me franchise. Hop was a flop. And while the Lorax was successful enough, both creatively and financially, to persuade Dr. Seuss's widow to allow the studio to move forward with animated adaptations of The Cat in the Hat, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and even a Dr. Seuss bio, that additional source of revenue is still in the development stage. And so Illumination Entertainment has put the Despicable Me franchise to work, having already released two films with a third film set for summer 2017. And in the meantime, this Minion spin-off. On paper, a Minions movie seems like a brilliant and obvious idea. Whenever the Despicable Me films have been released on Blu-ray, they've always included three new short films featuring the Minions. There has also been a successful mobile game, Minion Rush, plus the popular Universal Studios theme park attraction is called Minion Mayhem. Not to mention tons of Minion merchandise. But while there's no denying that everyone loves Minions, is Gru really so replaceable? I mean, just how important can Margot, Edith, and Agnes be to the franchise if they don't sell merchandise, right? I haven't seen any Dr. Nefario toys, have you? Or Lucy t-shirts? And you don't see anyone complaining about the lack of representation a la Black Widow. Plus, hey, Gru's replacement is voiced by America's sweetheart, Sandra Bullock. Hot off of Gravity, The Heat, The Blind Side, and The Proposal. She's an Oscar winner, who hasn't done an animated film since The Prince of Egypt way back in 1998. It's also interesting that as the Despicable Me franchise gets more and more successful, Despicable Me 2 was the most profitable film that Universal Studios has ever released, Illumination Entertainment gets more and more confident in representing their European origins. See, while Illumination Entertainment's headquarters might be in Los Angeles, the films are animated in France. Plus, Pierre Coffin, who's directed all the Despicable Me movies to date, including this one, plus voices the Minions, is French himself. In fact, one might even argue that this franchise's Euro sensibilities have helped make it a global brand, a refreshing change of pace in an animation industry that's largely Americanized. So at the end of the day, Minions isn't just going to prove whether or not these little guys need Gru and company, but whether or not Illumination Entertainment is right to trust their instincts. Say la pellicula, banana! Yes, the Minions speak a surprising amount of French and Spanish in this movie, and pretty much no English. The result being that for large parts of the film, particularly the first 15 to 20 minutes, you feel like you're watching a foreign language film without subtitles, which is a very bold choice by Illumination Entertainment, but one that I have to say at the end of the day totally works, because these little guys also have a lot of heart, and heart is universal, as is comedy. Now, speaking of comedy, Minions walks a very fine line between appropriate and inappropriate humor. In fact, many times while watching the film, I feared that it would fall to its death. I was like, man, you are so close to the line. Please don't cross the line. And having now seen the film in its entirety, I can say that for me personally, it never does cross the line. Instead, it's a death-defying spectacular, or in this case, example, of how to walk said fine line. But the thing about the line between inappropriate and appropriate humor is that its, its placement is personal. So I'm very curious to see how people react to the humor in this movie, which is funny, but also violent and inappropriate. Uh, I'm also very curious to see how people react to the Europeanness of Minions. This is by far and away the most Euro film I've ever seen from an American movie studio, in this case, Universal. Uh, but when you think about it, it totally makes sense because the creative people in Illumination Entertainment, uh, particularly when it comes to the Despicable Me franchise, come out of France. And at its core, well, this is overall a very European film, at its core, it's French. Uh, and speaking of that, they make a lot of jokes about the British, I think, as a result. Uh, and I just want to say that uh, 
for my review of Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, I started it out by saying, man, this is the perfect movie uh, to watch with tea and toast, which I meant in a loving way, because British tea and toast is awesome. But a lot of British viewers were very offended by that. So if that offends you, you are going to be livid when you see Minions. Although, to be fair, they take a pot shot at America as well. But just to give you an idea of how French this movie is, it has a weapon in it that doubles as a beret. Uh, but this is my non-spoiler review, so I can't give you any more details on that. I can't elaborate, uh, but my spoiler review will be going up later today. And uh, as long as we're talking spoilers, let me give you a warning. Don't let anybody ruin the end of this movie for you, because the ending of Minions is spectacular. And I think it's very uh, important that it come out of nowhere for you. Uh, also, though, I do have a semi-spoilery warning for parents, because I think parents can have the movie ruined for them just a tad, uh, because I want to illustrate how important it is for them to have a talk with their kids before seeing Minions. But I'm going to put that at the end of the video, so those of you who are not parents can bow out. Uh, so what can I say about Minions uh, that doesn't spoil anything? Well, I can say that it's delightfully zany, yet still has a strong through line as a story. And also, believe it or not, character development. Uh, I also loved the Minions. Uh, my favorite Minion by far and away is Bob, and I'd be very curious to who your favorite Minion, in, minion is as well. But again, no spoilers. Uh, save the spoiler comments for the spoiler review. I also think that Sandra Bullock does an amazing job in this movie. I'd seen a review that had said she kind of phoned in her performance, but I could not disagree with that more. Uh, I think in the beginning of the movie I was a little worried about her uh, character. I was like, it's coming a little bit too easy for you, and it, it seems a little too feminist. Uh, but don't worry, as the movie progresses, she gets better and better and better. Uh, but the real standout in terms of voice talent is by far and away John Hamm. John Hamm is so good in this movie. He voices uh, Scarlet Overkill's husband, and even when you know it's John Hamm doing the voice, you can't believe it's John Hamm doing the voice. It's just so far out, which is intentional, that you will want to see him do something like this in live action. I also have to say, as far as the 3D goes, I don't want to encourage you to pay extra money to see this in 3D because it's not necessary, but if you have the extra few extra dollars, I think it's worth spending because for me personally, it enhanced my viewing experience. I thought they did a very nice job with the extra dimension, uh, both in terms of overt, overtly using it and subtly using it. And so finally, I can say that Minions does a wonderful job of fleshing out uh, the little guys and making them uh, full-fledged characters, and I can't say anything else. I just can't wait to talk about the ending with you over in the spoiler review. All right, so if you are not a parent, uh, you may click away, go to the spoiler review if you've already seen the movie, or if you've already seen the movie, you might as well hear what I have to say, I guess. But if you're a parent, I'm not going to spoil the ending, but I just want to give you a little warning uh, about what kind of conversation I feel that needs to be had with small kids going to see this film. Who, by the way, loved this movie. I was in a, a press screening that was half press, half like families with little kids, and before the movie started, these kids were like out of control. To the level where I was like, man, I hope I can enjoy this movie, because these kids are all like on a super, like, like a dangerous sugar high. Uh, but while everybody applauded at the beginning of the movie and at the end of the movie, uh, and one guy, by the way, one solo adult in the back of the theater would applaud specific gags, which was just fantastic all on its own. But throughout the entire film, the, the child audience sat in rapt attention. I mean, they laughed a lot, but everybody was well behaved because they were so involved with what was happening on screen. But I think that you need to have a, a warning discussion about how minions can get away and do things that children should not do, right? Uh, because they're minions. They hang out with villain, villains. They're not humans. I think you need to make that really clear. Because the minions here, uh, they, do, they play with knives. They play with rats. Uh, for a long period of time, there's a rat, a very realistic, realistic rat that's used as a stuffed animal. Uh, and then also there's some lewd, so there's some lewd behavior and gestures, uh, which I think would be uh, tantalizingly imitatable by younger audiences, and probably adult audiences as well, but, uh, you know, it's uh, adults' own business what they want to imitate. But it's, as far as a child goes, they might not recognize that some of the things that are done here are very violent and would have a much different and more serious repercussion in the real world than it does in, in this film. Because also the villains in this movie are depicted as actually being 
amoral, uh, unethical, and, and willing to kill, and some of them do kill. Uh, and you believe that they'll kill. So that's a very big part of the movie as well. But I have to tell you, I promise you, it's fun times. So I love Dominions. I think it's spectacular, and I highly recommend that you see it, and in 3D, if, you, if you're so inclined. If you're even partially inclined, go with your gut. See it in 3D. All right, thank you for tuning into my review, and I hope you'll check out my spoiler review once you've seen the film.